فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحديث الثالث في شيء من فضائل الصيام the third حديث some of the virtues pertaining to fasting. في شيء من فضائل الصيام. Some of the virtues pertaining to fasting. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال كل عمل ابن آدم يضاعف الحسنة بعشر أمثالها إلى سبعمائة إلى سبعمائة ضعف. قال الله عز وجل إلا الصوم فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به يدع شهوته وطعامه من أجلي وللصائم فرحتان فرحة عند فطره وفرحة عند لقاء ربه ولخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريح المسك متفق عليه This حديث speaks about the virtues pertaining to fasting and how high the station of fasting or the position of one who fasts is. In this hadith there are four virtues that are mentioned. And as I said, the virtues of fasting are a lot and excessive. But these are only four which have been mentioned. Al-Ula, the first virtue is أن الصائمون the ones who are fasting يوفون أجورهم بغير حساب that their reward will be taken by Allah without any accountability without any figure attached to it every other actions فإن الأعمال كلها every actions تضاعف it is multiplied بعشر أمثالها ten times up to إلى سبعمائة الضعف up to seven hundred times except fasting fasting is not only that it does it gets 700 it gets up to 700 but it also has more فإنه لا ينحصر تضعيف في هذا العدد the multiplication and the multiplying of fasting isn't just up to 700 rather Allah multiplies it even more the reason is because Fasting is from patience, and patience doesn't have a reward. That has a figure to it. But قال الله تعالى الله says إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب. The ones who are patient verily, their reward are taken without any figure attached to it, just unrestricted, just goes on. And Imam Al Awza'iyu. And Imam Al-Awza'i, who is Imam Imam Ahl Sham, is a scholar of the people of Sham. He said about the people who are fasting, he said, لَيْسَ يُوزَنُ لَهُمْ وَلَا يُكَالْ The people who are fasting, their fasting is not scaled. It's not scaled. And yukal means there is... You know, rice, and it's taken with a what? There's a... They don't scale it. They don't put it in a scale. The scoop is already known. Five scoops, they'll say. Five. They'll sell it to you. It's a form of scaling. Or they've got a can or a tin. They put it in there, and they'll say, this is how much. The people who are fasting, there is no amount that has to be looked after, and it can't be more than that. No. إِنَّمَا يُغْرَفُ لَهُمْ غَرْفًا Allah, what does he do? 
Allah takes for them a taking, meaning He just gives it to them. You know how, you know, if a person just goes into their house and just, just give you everything, take it. They don't look at it. That's how it is for them. There's no amounts attached to it. The second virtue that this hadith mentioned is and Allah Ta'ala adafa as-sawma ila nafsihi Fasting, Allah attributed to himself. As he said in the hadith, فَإِنَّهُ لِي Fasting is mine. From all the actions there are out there, Allah attributed fasting to himself. And this, Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. Abdullah ibn Salah al-Fawzan said, he said, Allah knows best, but the reason to this is, لِكَوْنِ يَسْتَوْعِبُ النَّهَارَ كُلَّهُ is because it encompasses the whole day. The fasting one, he loses his desires and he's not allowed to fulfill his desires. His nafs is in need of it, he wants it. Especially when it's fasting is in the month, is in, is in the season of summer. And the heat is out there and you're thirsty. What happens at this point is, the person is desired, he desires to drink a water, a cup of water, cold water. And the fasting, the reason why Allah also attributed himself, Abdullah ibn Salah al-Fawzan said, because لِأَنَّ الصِّيَامَ سِرٌ بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَرَبِّهِ It's a secret between you and Allah. No one can ever swear by Allah that so-and-so is fasting. I can say so-and-so praise. Yes, I could. But I can't say so-and-so fast. There's nothing I can see. No one knows you're fasting. لَا يَطَّلِعُ عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى Except Allah. It's an internal action. The creation can't see it. And it's the only action where showing off can't enter it. Because if you do show off, I still, you haven't still proven to me you're fasting. وَلَا يَدْخُلُهُ رِيَاءٌ because showing off means you're showing me an action that you've done and you're doing it to show it to me. But you can't show fasting to me. I never know you fasting. Number three. The third virtue that this hadith mentions is النَّصَائِمُ إِذَا لَقِيَ رَبَّهُ The one who is fasting if he meets Allah wa ta'ala. The one who is fasting if he meets Allah he will be so pleased with his fasting. He will be so happy. Because he would see the reward in which he has ready for himself. And the reward would be built upon the fasting that he came with. And that he would also be happy when he breaks his fast. Because he knows he has accomplished something this day, today. A daily achievement. And this happiness, daily happiness which the person endures, the time that they're breaking their fast, is from those happinesses which are praiseworthy. Because it's being happy in obeying Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. It is being happy in following the command of your Lord, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And those are the two times that the fasting person is happy. The time when he's breaking his fast and the time when he meets his Lord, Allah wa ta'ala is going to be happy with the reward that he has. The fourth virtue that's mentioned here is the odor or the smell. And the smell that comes out of the mouth of the one who is fasting, it is greater to Allah wa ta'ala Misk, then the, f the musk fragrance, the smell that comes from a one who's fasting. Yeah, the smell that comes from a fasting person's mouth smells greater and better to Allah wa Taala than the smell of a musk. But that smelling, my brothers, is the day of judgment. In this world, your breath can stink. And your breath can be bad. 
the smell is the day of judgment. The reason why? Because the day of judgment is the day which the actions become apparent. It's the day that the reward of the actions are coming out. And in the hadith itself, there is an evidence to show that it's the day of judgment. Because it says, This is a wording of Muslim. It smells nice to Allah, the day of judgment. So what the hadith is trying to say that, is trying to say is, that even that though the smell is bad in this world today to the people's nose, وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مَكْرُوهَا فِي مَشَامِ النَّاسِ فِي الدُّنْيَا Even though it smells bad to the people today, they don't like it. لَكِنَّهَا أَطْيَبُ But it's greater عند الله to Allah مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ than the smell of the musk. You know why it smells better than the, the fragrance of the musk? Do you know why? The reason is because لِكَوْنِهَا نَاشِئَةً عَمْ طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى because this smell is gushing from one who obeyed Allah wa ta'ala. The obedience made it smell nice. The taqwa that you came with is what's making it smell nice. This hadith mentions those first four virtues. And of course the martyr who dies, the shaheed who's killed for the sake of Allah, who is fighting لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ الْعُلِيَا He is fighting for the word of Allah to be high. The day of judgment, the blood that gushes from him also smells nicer to Allah wa ta'ala than the what? The fragrance of the musk. That's not this dunya. That's all the what? That's all the day of judgment. So the person shouldn't trouble the people with their smell. He shouldn't Breathe over people's necks and go in people's faces and breathe to the, on their faces and then say that the fragrance that's coming out of my mouth Don't read the hadith for the people like that. You see? One of the virtues that this hadith hasn't mentioned that are part of the virtues of fasting is that fasting is min asbabi maghfirati al-dhunub wa takfiru sayyat. Fasting is from the things which a person's sins is wiped away for. Your shortcomings are expiated for you. Fasting expiates it for you. It rectifies your affairs for you. And that hadith is going to come to us inshallah soon, which is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he said, Man saama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambih. The person who fasts Ramadan for the sake of Allah wa ta'ala, then his sins who have the sins that you've already done that preceded, it will be forgiven for you. Your sins will be expiated for you. It will be wiped away for you. But that last one like, which I mentioned, Man saama Ramadan imanan wa gufira lahu ma min dhambi, which is in Sahihain min hadith Abi Huraira, that hadith, it's going to come to us inshallah, it is for a person who fasts sincerely for the sake of Allah. Mukhlisan lillahi ta'ala. Sincerity, purely. Because the hadith says, wahtisaban. He's doing it, hoping to get reward from Allah. He stayed away from his food. He stayed away from drinking. He stayed away from having relationship with his wife. His limbs are also fasting with him. From what? Anil Atham, not sinning, not speaking foul language. Because it's not just the mouth that's the eating and the drinking that's the fasting. You don't speak foul. You don't say that which angers Allah wa ta'ala. The whole body is fasting. That person is the one whose sins will be forgiven for him. The one who doesn't do that, who doesn't leave off these things, as the Prophet said, Man lam zur. The one who does not leave off idle speech, false testimony, ignorance, and working on that, 
فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه. Allah has no desire. Allah does not want you to leave only food and drinking for him. If you couldn't make your body fast with you, you couldn't have stayed away from sinning. There is no need Allah has from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for you to fast from drinking and eating. And I'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, for this hadith. Allahumma hafad lana sawmana. Oh Allah, protect our fasting for us. Waj'alhu shafi'an lana. And make it one that intercedes on our behalf. Wa'a'inna fihi ala ta'atik. And oh Allah, aid us in your obedience. Wa'jannibna turqa ma'asiyatik. And deviate and divert us, so, sorry, divert us from the paths of sinning. Waghfil lana wa li walidina. Oh Allah, forgive us and our parents. Wa li jami'il muslimin and all the Muslims. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.